Episode number 34 of the Game Audio Vlog. It's Thursday. My name is Adam, and we are covering today the very tail end, almost, or like 95, 98% of the way there, uh, of the doing sound design for 2D games using Unity and Wise series that I've been walking through uh, for a game called Into the Space. We're going to jump right into it because i got a lot to cover today. So uh, as you can see here, I've got Wise open, and I'm going to click you through a lot of what's going on here because it gets a little complicated, a little bit harebrained really quickly. Um, I did want to mention that in yesterday's video, I was, I was covering uh, everything to do with music and Wise. Today, I'm going to cover everything to do with music in Unity and in Code, but I did fail to uh, cover how you actually connect states to your music system. So you've got the music system right here as I've made it. Uh, you can copy it if you so choose, or you can make it more complicated if you choose to do that. Um, and if I double click that, then you get the actual uh, properties of it. And if you press F10 if you're on Windows, or if you're not on Windows, you go to your layouts, interactive music layout, and I'm not sure what the shortcut is on Mac. Uh, but you want to look for this association editor, which is down here. And I've got extra enemies, intro, and normal. These correspond to the game syncs that I have here up on this Project Explorer pane. I've got my num enemies group, which is the state group, yes. And then you have states, extra enemies, intro, and normal for my music. So these each correspond to, this is like a five second intro or a couple bars of the intro. This is my normal uh, audio loop for music. And this is my loop for when extra enemies are on the screen, meaning like five, five or more. So, and we'll show you how that all works in code in a minute. Uh, but if I were to go back to my music system, just double click it just to get you back used to the interface. Um, when you have your association editor open, this pane down here will show. What it's talking, it says remove path here on this button, and what each of these has is its own path. So the path is actually corresponding to what um, object these are relating to. Like, so when extra enemies is going on, then what, when it's the state of extra enemies, what object are we referring to that we want to play? And in this case, I want the um, music playlist container extra enemies to play. So again, if I click back on the music system, you'll see extra enemies is linked to the object of uh, the extra enemies uh, playlist container. Intro is linked to the intro playlist container. Normal is linked to the normal playlist container. And if I open these folder trees, you see again, these are all the music segments that contain the music tracks, so on and so forth. So essentially, when what these are saying is when it is one of these states, play the corresponding object at that time. So that's how to actually link the states and the playlists in Wise together to make it all work well. We've already covered the transitions, we've already covered the events and all of that, but I'll show you how we hook it all together. So if we go into Unity, and then you go to your hierarchy here on the left side, I've got my stuff hooked into main camera. Uh, you could do it, I believe, probably by the game controller as well, uh, if you wanted to. But I think that's actually, the game controller is where if you uh, were not to remove any of the audio you would see, or any of the audio from the normal game, uh, you would see the background music here. Um, but I've removed it and put it in main camera. I don't know that there's necessarily a right way to do it. Somebody who's smarter than me, who's worked in games for many years, would probably have more of an opinion on it than I would. Um, but this is where I've loaded my sound bank, and I believe that since main camera exists the entire time while we're playing this game, it's a fine place to put your uh, start event for your music. So trigger on start, which means trigger on the start of the main camera, and the main camera starts when the game starts, so we're all fine. The event name is music start, which again, if you go back into Wise, that corresponds to the event right here, which is music 
start, which has a single play event. And you don't need a stop event because the music is going to play the entire time. Going back to Unity. So, we've got the music started. How do we actually change our states? Well, if you want to go into, you're looking for your SS scripts folder within the project uh, explorer here. Uh, we want to go into Game Controller. So I've already got this open, this Game Controller script, which is in Mono here. Mono as in Mono Develop, which is the standard editor for Unity code. You can also use Visual Studio or any other code editor that you want. I kind of happen to like how Mono works, and it's pretty uh, bare bones. So when you open Game Controller underscore script, you're going to see this. What you're looking to do is to scroll down until you see the void update function. Update is called once per frame. Thank you, uh, Mr. Developer, for notating the code properly. Then this little section here is input get key equals R. So if the input uh, during the frame is R, then the application will load level zero, which is the beginning of the game. This is what happens when you blow up and then it says press R to restart the game. Uh, then this function will actually, if you press R, then it will reload the level. I don't know if it would actually work mid-game, but that's what it looks like, is that it's looking for you to press R at any time to actually restart the game. If you do this and you've been following the tutorial, if you hit R during, like, when you play your game, you blow up and then you hit R to reset, uh, then all of your audio is not going to work if you followed the tutorial the way I've outlined it. That is, I think, because of the way that I've loaded the sound bank onto the main camera. Uh, I don't have an unload of the sound bank, and I don't have a reload. So I think that I actually need to like code the sound bank to load in with the level itself, and then to actually unload when the level is reset. Um, I haven't gone back and done that or tested any of it, because this is a demo and a proof of concept for me, and it's not going to be released on anything, so when it breaks, I don't really care. I want it to play through one time. Uh, if you want to go and fix that, feel free, but I'm not going to show actually how to fix that. So if you've been playing through, you've got all your sounds to work and everything's great, but you hit R and everything breaks, uh, that's by design. Sorry. Um, so what we're actually really looking for is uh, this section here that I've actually custom coded. So, But it needs to be within the update function because we want to check on this once per frame because we want music to be frame accurate. And since we have such a so such an easy uh, music system, it's not going to weigh heavily on your game to uh, be checking things frame by frame. So uh, I've just notated here, keep track of enemy count and music transitions. We have a variable here, enemy count, which is instantiated above, which actually we have two variables that I want to draw your attention to. So public int enemy count and public int intro play count. Each of these things, it's a way to actually describe it. When, if you haven't ever done code before, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, and this looks really confusing and scary, uh, you'll see that each of these things here, each in the curly braces, is like a, is a, is a function is the best way to kind of describe that. It's actually not a, it's a class. These are all classes, excuse me. Functions are the things where you see, um, let's see here. Any of these guys. So like I in Raider Blue Spawn Waves and it has these parentheses here. You're actually looking for like something like that that has something within the parentheses we're sending off. Those things are called functions because they actually do something. Uh, classes are more descriptors. That's a, the, you should go look at a coding course if you're actually really interested. But I just want to draw your attention to the fact that good coding syntax means that you're uh, initiating variables early on. So what you do is you say hey, uh, I want a variable, in this case, we'll describe our two variables here. I want a publicly accessible variable. I want it to be an integer. An integer is a whole number. It is a number that does not have a decimal point. And then I want it to be named enemy count with a capital C. And in this case, I'm not ascribing any value to enemy count. And then, of course, you put a semicolon to end the line. Uh, then my second variable is a publicly accessible variable. And then I want another integer, whole number, and I'm calling it intro play count, which a, with a capital P and a capital C. Some programming languages don't pay attention to capitalization. I believe C sharp is one of those that needs to be properly capitalized. So if I refer to intro play count, I cannot type it as intro play count, all one word with no capitalization from this point on. 
and I want uh, intro play count to be uh, instantiated to zero. I want it to equal zero uh, from the very beginning when I actually make this variable. So enemy count is an integer, but it doesn't equal anything yet. And uh, intro play count is an integer, but an in already equals zero at this line here. Um, the reason why you need to understand you'll, the public thing is going to be very important in about two seconds, and I'll explain that. So enemy count as a publicly uh, available variable um, can be seen from any other script. So this comes into play when you've got enemy underscore script dot red count here. Red count as if I go to red script here, which you can also open from this side. Uh, red count, if I go up to the top, is a publicly accessible static integer. I don't remember what I'm referring to as static. I do believe that is important. Go ahead and type it in. I'm not going to talk about it any further. Um, but it is a publicly accessible variable, meaning it is available to be accessed from other scripts, from other functions that are within your project folder. Uh, and it is an, an integer, so it's a whole number, and then we've called it red count. Red count is then calculated down here in your start function. When you, when a red ship is built, when it is made and put on the screen, the red count goes up by one. If you remember before, I'm going to walk you through this really quick. Red count plus plus is the same as saying red count equals red count plus one semicolon. So what we're saying here is the number that exists as red count, make that one more. So if I have two here, this is going to be two plus, like red count equals two plus one, right? Uh, we don't want red count to actually equal what red count is. Uh, right now, we want it to equal red count plus one. That is, these two things here are saying the exact same thing. When you're first starting out in code, it's easier to think in the lower, in the, the uh, lower line here than it is to think in the higher line that's just how your brain thinks you want I want the number of red count but I want it to be plus one so instead of typing this type red count plus plus it's a super easy cheaty way to do it uh, you'll see down here where we have if health is less than or equal to zero meaning if the player ship ex has exploded red count minus minus this is the exact same thing as doing red count equals red count minus one so we're subtracting one um, so you see we count red count when a ship uh, is made on screen and when a ship is blown up by the player, right? But then there's a third thing that you have to do to keep track of the ship. Uh, if the player doesn't blow it up, it needs to be um, taken away by the boundary of the screen, right? So if, if you miss the ship and it goes below you, below the screen, we still need to count it as not existing on the screen anymore. So you want to go, you'll see destroy by boundary here. I've got it open up on a tab here. We've covered this a little bit, a tiny bit in another video, and I don't remember exactly which one it is because we talked about the tags. Um, I think it might have been when we were talking about enemy ship sounds. Uh, but refer to the tags there. You want to know at least that red enemy is the red ship, blue enemy is the blue ship, green enemy is the green ship. Tags correspond to, let me just click through this real quick. If you go to your prefab, enemy red, I'll just give you a quick refresher. Tags are up here, and you can click and add a tag if you need to. Uh, this was tagged as enemy before, if I remember correctly. And as far as I know, there's nothing in this game referring to the enemy tag that we cared about. So I made a new tag called red enemy, and then there's one green and blue enemy too. Um, because we need to refer to these ships somehow, and that was kind of the easiest way I could figure to do it. Each tag is unique. Uh, it's they're not they're each um, game object can only have one tag. You can't tag uh, game objects, as far as I know, with multiple things. So um, what we're looking at here, in a in the easiest fashion, this is saying. If a game object is off the screen, destroy the, the object. And if the object is tagged with red enemy, blue enemy, or green enemy, then what we want to do is uh, subtract the count of red, blue, or green ships by one. So the way that I refer to that, because the red count, blue count, and green count are all public variables, as we've called them here, 
they're publicly accessible. Um, then, and it, we refer to it as enemy red underscore script dot red count minus minus. That subtracts the red count minus one. Enemy under, enemy red underscore script is referring to the name of the script. You can see right here. And then it is referring to dot red count, which is the red count variable. If this were to be private, which is the other way to declare a variable, private, you're going to see something when I go, let's see that. I go here, red count is suddenly red. Mono develop is brilliant. I don't know if Visual Studio does this. I'm sure it does. But mono is brilliant and says, hey, this doesn't work because it's a private variable now. So if I go back and call this public, it will work again. Check that out. So this is the same thing we're referring to in the enemy count uh, in the uh, game controller script. So game controller underscore script, we have enemy red underscore script dot red count plus enemy blue script dot blue count plus enemy green script dot green count. So what we're referring to here is the entire count of enemies that's currently on the screen because remember this is happening once per frame. So a frame happens, a frame is, is made, drawn on the screen, and we're saying what's the count of the number of enemies on the screen? We're pulling red count, blue count, and green count and all adding them together all at one time. Then I have debug.log here, which doesn't really matter. You don't actually need to include this if you're just straight up copying my code. This is where I'm saying, hey, Unity print in the console, enemy count dash whatever the enemy count is. Um, I have also got intro play count here because this is uh, a test script for me to know how many times the intro I played through. So the last complicated bit is to actually make these states happen based off the enemy count. Um, and how many times you actually play through the intro. So this is a little janky, a little hacked together, but because of the way I've done transitions where uh, I wanted the music to transition uh, once the music has actually started and we've played through some bars and stuff, um, when I was trying to play the intro and then immediately switch states to normal from intro, uh, Wise got kind of pissed off, and if I didn't keep the state as intro for a few seconds, and then then switch the state to normal, it would immediately play the normal music upon starting the game. So this script here is to not only set the states, but also give the intro time to actually play through. So this if statement says, if intro play count is greater than 10, and enemy count is less than 5, then we want our state to be set to normal. So this is AK Sound Engine, which remember is wise, and then we want wise, hey, wise, set the state of the, our num enemy state group to normal. Again, if we go back to wise, you can see game syncs, here's our, uh, here's our state group, and here's all our states. So num enemies, right there. We want that to be referred to right there and right there. So that's our state group, comma, our state, right? So then if uh, this is not true, else if intro play count is greater than 10, AK sound engine dot set state num enemies uh, extra enemies. So this is if intro play count is greater than 10 and we have a number of enemies that's anything that's greater than 5, right? So this is referring to less than 5, this is anything greater than 5, just by default, right? That's what it's looking for. You don't need to actually refer to and enemy crown is greater than five. You just let it be, right? If else, so in this case, if neither of these two if statements is satisfied, which means that intro play count is under 10, it's not greater than 10, then we're going to go in this else statement and have the state set to intro and then increment the play count variable, intro play count variable. So this will get all the way up to 10 after 10 frames, right? Because we're going to call this once, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times it'll go through this. And on the 11th time, uh, this will become 11, and then you'll hit intro play count. Oh, that's going to be greater than 10. And then it's going to start counting the enemies back and forth. Um, so if you have enemy count less than 5, it'll go stay still normal, stay still normal, stay still normal, stay still normal. And then if you go else if play count, uh, intro play count is greater than 10, oh, and my enemy count is not less than 5, 
then it's going to go, oh, it's time for extra enemies. Uh, and then it'll switch the state over to extra enemies. And I actually have a incorrect code here. It needs to get rid of semicolon. Don't know where that came from. Um, and actually, yeah, so that, that's just we need one semicolon. So that's the code of it. Uh, to walk you through it one more time really quickly, because I know that uh, that was a lot to throw at you at one time. You have all of your wise music stuff, which we've already set up, that's already right here, with your state groups and all of the paths set up correctly, right? Then you want to go into Unity. Unity will pull out. There we go. Go to your main camera. Add a component. Uh, go into... Come on. So slow. You want to make a new wise component, an AK event. You want it to trigger on start, and you want your event name to be whatever the start event for your music system is. Then you go into your game controller. Oop, wrong place. Scripts. Uh, game controller script here, which if I double click that, you, uh, Mono will get kind of pissed on my computer. So then uh, you want to make two publicly accessible integers enemy count intro play count this is again a little bit hacked to get it together but it works my opinion on hacking things together is if it works and if it doesn't break anybody else's stuff and it doesn't ruin your game it's fine you don't need to be a code artist you don't need to be a uh, perfectionist in this if you haven't noticed i do screen cap videos and uh, some of them are screwed up. Some of them I haven't done the most perfect job on them. But I've been releasing five a week, every week for like six weeks now, right? I'm not really absolutely worried about getting perfection on these things. This is another rant for another day, sure. But uh, when you go through and code stuff, I feel like it's the same when you're doing audio. Like you get the audio good enough, right? But it's not quite perfect. And then you spend like hours and hours and hours just getting it perfect when good enough would have done. Um, so don't get caught in the trap of trying to make something beautiful when you just need to make something work. Uh, anyway, that's another rant for another time. But I feel like that's important uh, because this is totally hacked. Uh, then, so again, we want a public, two publicly accessible variables, enemy count to count your enemies, and then intro play count to cheat your music system. You need to keep a count of your enemies and have a, the sum of your enemies here. So red count, blue count, and green count, which are done in your individual enemy red, enemy blue, and enemy green scripts. They are uh, added to when the ship is built. They are subtracted from when the ship is either destroyed or it's destroyed by a boundary right here. Uh, and then your music is done by an if statement. And if you have, if you've done intro play count is greater than 10, works for me. So if you've played through your intro and your enemies are less than 5, you want a normal state. If you have played through your intro and your enemies are anything other than less than 5, then you want extra enemies state to play. And if you have not played through your intro yet, which is the else statement, you want to set your state to be true and have your intro play count incremented up until it's greater than 10. That's it. Then your uh, game should play just fine. And I'm actually, I was going to wait to save this for later, but I'll go ahead and click play this and give you an idea of what this is like. <laughs> So this is the intro sound. There's your normal state. There's your extra enemy state. And then as soon as some of these go off the screen, there you go. There's your transition back to normal. There's your transition back to extra enemies. So it's that straightforward. And that's it. That's all your music. Your music system's built. You've actually even heard the final um, product right there of your entire game. Uh, next up, tomorrow is going to be another Audio Friends Friday day because it's Friday. Next week I'll get into mixing and uh, routing audio through busing and all of that sort of stuff. And then hopefully, maybe I'll do a QA and a or something if anybody has any questions. I don't know how many people have been actually watching all these videos. Um, I do, I have an idea of how many of them have viewed, but I don't know if anybody has any major, major questions. So... 
Uh, I hope to at least fill up most of the next week with videos, if not all of next week. Uh, and then I'm going to chit chat with you guys about, um, well, not chit chat, but I'm going to tell you what is up with my vlog uh, coming in the future. I've got some plans, got some ideas, and uh, I'm excited to share those with you. So thanks for watching. I know this was really long and also kind of detailed. Uh, if you've got any questions, ping me at Adam T. Croft on Twitter or hit me up in the comments. Thanks. Hope you have a great day.